Clientless SSL VPN plugins on the ASA. If you're asking yourself the question, what the heck's a plugin? You are in the right place. Let's begin. Our objectives in this micro nugget are really simple. They're two basic things. Number one is to take a look at the basic functionality of the clientless SSL VPN and how we can enhance it with something called a plugin. And then secondly, how we can limit what we've already given the user so he doesn't have too much access. Let's start with the basic connection of an SSL VPN and take a look at what it feels like from the user's perspective. Depending how the ASA is set up, when the user connects, they may receive a drop-down message asking them which connection profile to use. Let's go ahead and use the uh, sales connection alias, and let's go into sales user. Now that we're in, we get a banner message, and this is what it looks and feels like from the user's perspective. They've got web access, they've got file access, if they go to the home page, Here's the bookmarks we've created for them, and they can access HTTP, HTTPS, CIFS, or FTP, and that's about it. Just to verify it works, let's go to a server on the inside. That looks great. We'll go back to the home page, but it doesn't offer the ability to do things like SSH or VNC or remote desktop through this SSL clientless portal. We can add that by simply telling the ASA that we want it to use some additional plugins. From the administrator's perspective, if we wanted to add the plugin functionality, we would do so by going to Configuration, Remote Access VPN, and open up the portal details and go to Client Server Plugins. From here, we could add any plugins that we had. For example, let's add a plugin for VNC. And I happen to have that already stored on my flash, so I'll just go get it. They're jar files. So there's our VNC one right there. I'll import that one. Let's also import another one for Remote Desktop. And we'll do that right here. I have that on my flash as well. And there's the RDP one. We'll import that as well. And then last but not least, let's also do one for SSH. That way we can do SSH right through the SSL VPN clientless portal, which of course may not be for everybody, but for a, a user who is supposed to be authorized to do SSH, it would be a very nice feature to have. So now that those are all imported, and they're effectively available on the system. Let's go back to the end user. We can just refresh. Now, due to the plugins, we have this additional functionality. So the user, if they want to take advantage of these features, they could click on here for any bookmarks. Now, we haven't created bookmarks for this user, but check this out. They also have this additional functionality right here. So let's try the VNC. If we wanted to go to that internal server at 10.0.0.5, we can do so right now, right here through the clientless VPN portal. So it's connecting to the server. It's asking us to authenticate. And now we're connected to the device, the Ubuntu server in this case, that's at 10.0.0.5. We're VNC'd right into it all through the SSL VPN client, courtesy of the plugins. So we have this user as a clientless SSL VPN who's doing a VNC session through the plugin over to this device right here. Now the challenge next is, what if we don't want that same user or that group of users to be able to try to VNC to any of our devices? How do we stop that? To stop that, we're gonna use something called a web type ACL. And that web type ACL can use regular expressions as variables and we can filter on SSH or remote desktop protocol or VNC, pretty much anything coming in through the clientless SSL VPN connection, we can filter. So by using a web type ACL and applying it to that user or to his group, we could specifically say, we want you only to be able to access VNC wise, this address at dot five, or maybe remote desktop protocol to this IP address at dot six, or maybe SSH to another address of dot seven. And just like any other access list, at the end of this web ACL, there's an implied deny. So we can be very specific on what resources the user can access while the VPN tunnel is up. In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at the before picture with the clientless SSL VPN. Very limited access, not a whole bunch of protocols. However, after we add the plugins to the ASA, we have additional functionality based on the plugin. For remote desktop, use the remote desktop plugin. For SSH, use the SSH plugin and so forth. Now, once we have the plugin applied, how do we limit users from being able to try to access virtually everything? Well, of course, we'd want to use local security. But beyond that, we can also set up filters on the ASA itself. The web type ACLs can filter at the ASA to prevent 
certain types of traffic like VNC from this user to go to any other device other than the intended resource. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.